All right. Well, hi, everyone. Thank you for joining our subcommittee meeting on uh, leveraging resources. I think we just have a quorum and Courtney, I'll just read out who I see from the group rather than a roll call, but we have myself, Amy Moyer, Brett Wolf, Christina Burry, Christy Belton, um, and Kirk Will. And then we also have Katie McGrath Novak. And then others in attendance, we have Aaron Green and Diana Selby. And then Chaska, can you um, help me with pronouncing your last name? Waiwaka. Perfect. Thank you for being here. CFRI. Perfect. And I think that's our group. So we just have a quorum to get us started. Um, so for today's meeting, we are going to continue on with reviewing the pre-fire playbook recommendation. Um, we had a good discussion last meeting about the purpose, goal, and audience and moving forward with that. Um, so I'm hoping that we can decide on the purpose, goal, and audience. We can consider committee action to recommend um, the pre-fire playbook at the next Forest Health Committee, or we, I think we can also appropriately continue to, to keep the Forest Health Committee updated on uh, emerging recommendation from this committee so we can have that discussion and then spend some time with um, what would be the content and outline for the pre-fire playbook with leaving some time for homework assignments and potentially a workshop to really get this across the finish line. So I wanna make sure we leave some space for that so we can take a little bit of a leap on this recommendation and move forward on some of the other important topics that we've talked about with this um, committee. And then if there's time, you know, I didn't wanna lose sight of conversations that we've had about a Colorado All Lands Forest Activity Database. And it sounds like some of those conversations at a very high level are continuing. So um, Aaron, if it's okay to, to put you on the spot, you and Brett Wolk, Brett had recommended maybe tagging on just a very quick update so we can keep this on our radar. So that's our agenda today. Um, also starting, Brett, I know you're not feeling well, so let me know if you're up for still giving a high level overview of um, a recent report that's come out. Uh, discussing the Chafee County model for risk assessment decision support. We did touch on it a little bit at our last meeting, but um, just to kind of get our creative thoughts flowing um, and look at some lessons learned from Chafee County. So we can um, touch on that if, if you're up for it, Brett. And if not, I'm happy to, to walk through some of that report too. Um, but before we get going, we have our March meeting minutes that we can entertain a motion to adopt I did have one question, Kirk, for you. I thought, um, I'm, I was trying to remember if you were at the meeting in March so we could appropriately note that. Could you remind me? If I'm there, if I'm muted. <laughs> yeah, I was there, yeah. Perfect, that, that was my recollection. So Courtney, just one amendment to the notes and I apologize for not doing the roll call um, so you could hear that clearly, but we'll just note that Kirk was in attendance. Um, and I think that's my only edit. So um, as amended with the, the notation that Kirk Will was um, in attendance, happy to entertain a motion to, to approve those minutes as amended. I'll move to approve. I'll second. Great. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Great. The meeting minutes are adopted. Um, so Brett, let me know if you're feeling up for talking about Chafee County, otherwise happy to walk through it too. Yeah, I'll be quick and hopefully I make it through the whole call. We'll see. Um, yeah, I, we talked about this a little bit. Now there's a report that's out. So I kind of just wanted to share, um, I'll share my screen real quick and just point out a couple things. Um, so this is just the executive summary that got sent out and the first page details just a little bit of like there is a big analytical process that is a part that we've been talking about communities, how do you actually map things and think about the trade offs. And so the heart of this is this what I have highlighted of how did we integrate a rigorous science based modeling approach with this robust community driven social process. 
to inform where the risk reduction um, per dollar invested was greatest. So that's the, there's a lot in the report that details that, um, but also it's not just about where you can manage forests. So this other highlight of the CD, CWPP process also identified limits of forest management um, to reduce wildfire risk and inspired need for additional activities that complement and enhance forest management to promote positive wildfire outcomes. So there's more about forest management than just the trees. Um, and so that's sort of the, the basic take homes of this. And we lay out the whole process of how step-by-step um, -step that happened. Um, and then the back page is more the keys to success. And this is what I was, um, I think these big headers are some of the things that I've been talking about and we've been talking about of as a Forest Health Council, how could we empower and provide resources and tools so that communities around the state could um, you know, be set up and build their capacity and readiness to do these kind of processes. And it's gonna look different in every location and every geography and every even similar geographies of different social settings and contexts. Um, but these are some sort of keys to success that I think we've been talking about and circling around as a Forest Health Council. How do we provide tools and resources or knowledge or funding to do different kinds of this? Because some areas are really strong in some of these and some are, you know, in others and vice versa. Um, and it's not always just about funding, it's about other resources and tools. So that's about all I had to say to add um, to it. I, I was hoping it would be helpful to spur some discussion amongst the council of um, what other sort of keys to success and, and things we've been talking about that aren't on here um, that people think are important, or maybe this is a framework for us to just start and add to or subtract from of the kinds of things we're looking for as a council to help promote or crown the state. Um, and there's, you know, this is our, this highlights a process that we did and I did in Chafee County, but um, this is very similar to wildfire ready watersheds or consultants who do um, you know, watershed wildfire protection plans or other community wildfire protection plans. I think this um, you know, is robust to lots of those other processes. Um, yeah, thank you, Brett. What um, mm -hmm. others from the group, what what seems really relevant or resonates with you from Chafee County's example, or what do you think is another key to success that's missing that we should highlight as we keep discussing this? And we have a, yep, go ahead, Christy. I was gonna say, we have a smaller group, so feel free just to certainly use the raise hand if that's helpful, but also feel free just to jump in. Okay, thanks, Amy. Um, so I read through that, that report, um, that's linked, the full report is linked in, in the, the one that you sent last time, right, Brett? Okay. Um, yeah, and it's right on the bottom of that, the two page. Yeah, thing. so I read through it and I was like, wow, you guys did a ton of work um, and, and it's impressive. So I have, I have one question relating to just your whole report. Um, you know, is there a way that we can, as a forest health council, maybe not reinvent the wheel? Um, because it can, can we just basically do what you're doing for lack of a better way to put it? And, or can we use your report as like a sort of a framework to give, to guide us? So one of my questions for you is, was there sort of an outline that you guys did that we might be able to apply as the broader forest health council um, and kind of copy what you did. Um, it just, you put a ton of work into it. It's so valuable. That's one question. Um, thank you. Um, uh, you made it through the whole report. <laughs> I, I hope that was um, not too painful and sounds- It sounds wasn't, enjoyable. I probably couldn't do a book report in. on it, but um, it was it was interesting. 
I think, it, you know, these are some things that I tried to distill down, but there's a lot of similarities between this. And like I said, some of the other things, the state uh, forest service forest action plan has a really great templates of, you know, planning big scale down to local or local up to big um, large landscapes and how you work across those different planning trajectories and telescoping in and out and components that go into different kinds of planning processes. Um, so I, I think there's some, you know, I've I've read, I've helped um, lead workshops for the State Forest Service when that was first came out of how to implement it. So I've gathered information from, from these, but I think our report is not, um, it's building on, on lots of other things that are out there. Um, is my hope. And, and so, yeah, we, you know, that's why we shared it is so, cause I was hoping it would be useful. I think we could combine that, you know, again, with some of these other things that are out there and other tools um, to say, this is a recommendation that the forest health council comes up with of a pre-fire playbook of how to organize yourselves, the kind of resources and the kinds of processes that are helpful that are within you know, CFRI's experience, but also, like I said, State Forest Service, the CWCB, these other organizations that are out there. Um, yeah, I, I, what it did for me, what I, what I liked is that it added some clarity, because it, it seems like we've just, you know, been trying to gather information, and maybe there's still a lot of a shotgun approach, whereas, you know, that, uh, I feel like your port your report maybe gave me a little bit of direction. So, so that was good. And then Brett, I have one other question for you. Um, and I might've missed it, but I did not see any mention of like grazing by cattle um, or any sort of, you know, mitigation um, up front. And the reason I'm asking that is because um, we were just talking about it last night. There, there's so much snow up here, like in Route County. And one of our Forest Service people was talking about how that can be a good thing, but it might ultimately increase the fire risk because we got so much snow that we're going to have maybe some super tall grass. And then if it turns off and it's a dry fall, then all that does is just add to the problem. And so my question is, was grazing even, um, is it at all a consideration? So yes, grazing is a consideration and that's actually come up in subsequent discussions last six-ish months as some of these forest management projects have got on the ground and then people are seeing um, really intense and large um, herbaceous response. Um, and some of it has been concerns about um, whether it's uh, weed, noxious weeds coming in versus native and things like that. But regardless, people are concerned there's lots of herbaceous vegetation that can carry a fire. Um, so that has been discussed amongst the group and through newspapers and press a little bit and some things like that. Um, so that, I think that's a one of the downsides of some of the modeling that we do is it's there's ways that we've worked hard to incorporate how to prioritize the forest management work, but incorporating some of these other practices, um, you know, we haven't incorporated it at sort of every time we do it and, and we're always working to incorporate more, um, but it's not directly incorporated in the prioritization in the map, right? And that's what everybody gets fixated on is the map. And that's what I was trying to highlight and the whole intent of this report is to highlight the collaborative and social learning outcomes that happened through this, where people realized and talked about and said, how do we incorporate things like grazing as a strategy um, or other strategies in, in our overall plan? Um, but that that's the danger that I think is out there of pushing everyone to, let's make a map. It has to be sort of a map plus, yeah. um, because I haven't seen anything that incorporates everything <laughs> yeah. you need in one in one way. Yeah, thank so. you. Any other questions or thoughts for Brett as we think about Chafee County's report as an example starting point? Um, I think the only 
maybe it's a question, but still seeing just in general the the kind of disconnect of water supply watersheds as a value as a community value at risk in CWPPs. I think things are coming around. I think, um, but I just. I wonder if there's a way to really um, highlight that or just make sure people are even thinking about it um, for water supplies as a value at risk that where the water comes from in Colorado isn't necessarily the community it serves. So um, yeah, I think just adding in some language about that if it's not already added. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Christina. And I know that's been just a flag as we've discussed this um, recommendation throughout. Any other thoughts? And then I'll pull up, I'll share my screen with where we have landed with purpose, goal, and audience. And some of the recommendations were to make sure we included a broader, you know, if we call it pre-fire playbook, that the purpose, goal, and audience includes a broader, broader recognition of forest health and resiliency. Any other thoughts before we move off Chafee County? And, and like I said, the links to the full report are in the agenda for, for folks to take a closer look. And thanks, Brett, for sharing. I think the only other connection I'll make is at our last meeting a month ago, um, Katie, and I don't remember if Shaska spoke up, but Katie presented on this proposal about this collaborative stages of readiness and how you assess people's different um, you know, strengths and capacities and resources. And that is, you know, there could be a direct connection to some of these, you know, here's here's sort of where we want people to get for this, you know, pre-fire planning and and even, you know, thinking about pre-fire and connecting that to post-fire and things like that. But um, that's a tool to assess people's, you know, how close they are to these keys to success and how and getting there. I'll go ahead and share my screen. Um, can everyone see the agenda and the purpose need, purpose goal and audience? So I did wanna have just a quick discussion on where we've landed with both the overarching recommendation to continue on with the pre-fire playbook and walk through the purpose goal and audience with the track changes from our last meeting. So they're up on the screen and I'll just read them um, so folks can think about them for a minute or two, but the pre-fire playbook will assist, uh, the purpose, the pre-fire playbook will assist with positioning all areas and communities in Colorado to better leverage resources, knowledge share and be competitive at receiving funding to achieve effective forest health management and resiliency with a goal that the pre-fire playbook provides a starting point on how to access science-based modeling existing resources and technical capacity and statewide priorities to improve existing processes in pre-fire planning and forest health efforts. And then the audience is targeted at the local government and community level while being broadly applicable to a range of stakeholders from the individual to multiple adjacent counties interested in advancing pre-fire planning and building forest health resiliency. Um, so that's where we stand after the last meeting. I want to have a discussion with this group um, and maybe Courtney, you can help us a little bit with the timing of the next um, recommendation document that gets sent to the, the governor as part of this um, to think about, are we at a stage where we would recommend to the Forest Health Council that we wanna continue moving forward with this idea um, so that it can be incorporated into our next council document. Um, so those are some of the pieces that I was thinking about of, you know, we have a smaller group today, but what is the, you know, timing consideration to bring this to the full council potentially at our next meeting coming up so that it could be appropriately incorporated into our next um, full council document. So Courtney, sorry to put you on the spot, but I'm curious if you have any thoughts on timing that we should consider, and then certainly want to open it up to the full group to get any thoughts on 
where we stand with these edits and, and the recommendation. Yeah, Amy, I'm, I'm happy to give my thoughts. And I think what you're saying about having sort of a first approval by the council at this May 11th meeting sets us up really well to have this incorporated in the recommendations that are going to the governor. Angela would like to do that whole process a few months earlier than we did this year. So I think we sent the recommendations to the governor in October. I think she'd rather do it in August. And so I think having uh, this first presented to the council in May really sets us up for like flushing it out a little bit more over the summer. And, and so, yeah, I like that timeline that you presented. Thanks, Courtney, that's helpful. Um, thoughts from the group? Where do you think we, we stand with this? Do you mean where we stand with how we wanna approach uh, at the May 11th meeting? Yeah, thanks, Christina. I think um, considering if we want to take a committee action to recommend this in terms of the purpose, goal, and audience to the Forest Health Committee, just to get their buy-in that this is something that we will continue to pursue and that we would incorporate into the recommendations to the governor um, document, or do we need more time to, to fully discuss this in a more robust way. I think one of the first questions is going to be if I were them, if I were the full council, I would be thinking like, well, who who's going to do this? <laughs> so yeah. maybe having a I, I'm fine with moving it forward for the May 11th meeting, but I think maybe having some of those anticipating some of those questions yeah. um, may be helpful. And I've had some of the same same thoughts of, you know, do we, you know, is our final product a more fully fleshed out outline or as a subcommittee, do we break into groups somehow to, to actually tackle some of the content in a more full way? Um, I'm open to thoughts on that too. And Courtney, also on your thoughts of just the bounds of what is our role as a subcommittee in council that we're not overstepping a role that would be, um, on the agency level. Yeah, that's a good question. I can, can find out um, like from my bosses what they think, um, yeah, DNR's role is versus council members' roles. I know some of the other councils like the I think it's the fire commission has staff. Um, whereas like my job is to run co-swap and I support the council. So uh, let me check to find out um, how much they think DNR or, you know, maybe there's somewhere else in DNR that could do this. If you guys are hoping that more um, the department takes on this role and, and maybe it's collaborative. So I can, I can check with, um, with Tim Mock, our deputy to see what his thoughts are. And then, yeah. I imagine you all have some good ideas too. That's helpful, Courtney. And I think just taking off sort of the facilitator hat, you know, my thought is, I think some of the benefit of the pre-fire playbook is really leveraging the thoughts and expertise of the Forest Health Council to have, you know, whether it's maybe not a fully baked document that's ready to post from the council, but, but pretty heavily leads on the experience of all of the diverse backgrounds of the council to have, you know, whether it's a, pretty clear outline or annotated outline or has some content. I think that's my hope is that we really use the expertise of this committee and the full council to, to really develop a starting place that's meaningful to a diverse set of communities um, because there's just such a wealth of knowledge and expertise to, to leverage here. Um, so I, I, I imagine it would be somewhere in the middle um, but but I'd really appreciate just any feedback, Courtney, you have that we could consider. And I think that's a great flag, Christina, that the full help, full council will have those those questions that, you know, we can say we may have some clarification by then, but um, we can tackle a little bit more this summer. I like that. I like that idea, Amy, where it it would be kind of like an annotated outline drawing from our, our expertise and understanding of the different topic areas that, that we're all experts in. So I, I think that's a really good suggestion. Christy, what do you think? 
yes, I agree with that. And, and I actually love that idea that you just spoke about where we draw in expertise from everybody on the greater council. And my question would be, is there something, you know, some sort of an example or something a little bit more concrete that we could go to them, you know, at the May 11th meeting with just, here's what we have in mind and here's what we would need from everybody. Um, just maybe a little bit of clarity so that we can give them an example of what we have in mind. Katie or Kirk, I think Brett had to step away. Any thoughts from, from you all? I think that makes sense to both of those things. And I think it makes sense to put it on the Forest Health Council, the, the larger Forest Health Council's radar sooner rather than later, because I think a lot of people are talking about similar topics. And I think that big group would be able to point us to like, hey, don't forget about this or don't miss this. Um, so I don't want to get too far. It's like, we want to have a clear proposal for what we need from the broader Forest Health Council. But I also think we should not get too far without making sure that everyone's had a chance to put in like, oh, someone else is working on something similar. Here's how we can tie in. So just making sure that we have all the moving parts getting in at the right time. Yeah, I, I agree. And just, I know um, with some of the, the, the governor's office, wildly important goals, we're already tracking a lot of this stuff in the projects that we've been doing um, on the on all state lands actually in those priority areas so i mean there's a lot of stuff going on in other spots that i think can really assist this process yeah thanks katie and kirk one i guess one recommendation might be our next meeting is monday may 8th which is right before the next full council meeting and in hopes of having a fuller group of our subcommittee we could hold on taking formal action today and set ourselves up over the next month of having a clear recommendation that we place, go ahead and have Courtney leave some space. And, and normally I think we always have updates from the subcommittees anyway, um, to be able to have a good discussion with the Forest Health Council at large about this pre-fire playbook, but we can continue to refine maybe our committee action next meeting um, to set ourselves up for May, May 11th. I see some that nods. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's good. I think I'm just, I just want to make sure that um, on our meeting on May 8th, that I don't know that we wouldn't run into the same issue where we were kind of kicking the can down the road. So maybe, uh, maybe talking today about like, what is it at May 8th that, that we want to officially decide um, for the May 11th meeting? Maybe that's it. And I, I get that a lot of that does kind of depend on the conversation um, with Tim Mock and, and kind of drawing some sideboards around DNR's role versus the Forest Health Council. So I think we need to, I think that needs to be, um, resolved. I don't know, Amy, if you want that information before the May 8th meeting or? I think that leads into just a good conversation on making sure we have some strong homework assignments coming out of this meeting yes. so that we send around. My hope is that I can send around a more fully baked, here is the committee action we're expecting to take on May 8th. So please come with any final discussions or recommendations so that we can pretty quickly take this you know, formal action and be set up for May 11th um, with the purpose goal and audience you know, very clearly established. I think we have that unless there's any final tweaks to this. Um, and then maybe some answers of, here's how we expect to move forward over the next few months to lead to an annotated outline or lead to this final deliverable. Um, so that we have a little bit more for the Forest Health Council to react to and a little bit more clarity on our end of what committee action we're taking um, by May 8th. Thank you. But Christy, go ahead too. Yeah, I, I agree with what you just said. And, and part of the reason I'm maybe pre pressing on something that's 
more clear for me anyway, and it'll probably come when we have our homework assignments is like, in my mind, there are three things that, that could work. We have the um, sort of the flow chart that John Ring kind of did. And I like that idea. We have the report that Brett did, and it seems like that's taken, you know, there's all that work's been done or a ton of work has already been done. Do we kind of use his and, and go from there? And then also we've got that Utah website that I think we talked about that just looks like another great idea. And so for me, I would like to kind of work toward what does this look like and what format might it be with everybody else filling in the blanks and saying, hey, don't forget about this and that. Yeah. I'm, I'm just struggling with where do we start? Yeah, I think that's a good um, question, Christy. And I think we've, you know, we've talked a lot about purpose, goal, and audience. I think we move on from there unless there's any discussion pieces that anyone from this group wants to have and really move forward of what is the final deliverable and what is the content? Is it, does it start from a keys to success model like we talked about with Brett's report or I can happy to pull up, I sent it around John Ring's idea of um, sort of the workflow concept of, you know, here's, here's sort of a worksheet of questions to find out your starting point or your collaborative stage of readiness or what, you know, what do you need as a community to move forward? And there's probably a way to embed both of those concepts of the keys to success with some sort of workflow opportunity that really leads people to the resources or connections that they need at the stage that, that they're in. Um, so I'm happy to share John's worksheet, and I'll try and zoom in a little bit, but um, he talked about this a little bit last time of this workflow concept of, you know, first step has planning, mapping, or modeling been completed? If yes, go to step two. If no, you know, what level is needed? How do we get it? What tool is best? Um, going to step two, looking at social, you know, social license, social support. Yes, no, having sort of this collaborative stage of readiness or support, um, and then continuing on down with available data tools. How do the priorities overlap with other statewide priorities? And does the treatment area need additional funding to connect with funding? So certainly, I think these were just John's quick notes. Um, and if he was here, he could give a much more, um, a much more excellent um, interpretation, but I think the overall concept is just to think through this workflow concept of, you know, again, I think we've all been very clear, we don't wanna reinvent the wheel, but we could provide some of that kind of connective tissue with all of our various backgrounds of how do we really connect communities to the resources or stages that they're at um, so that all of these great technical capacity, all of the funding, all of it has a little bit of a, a starting point and works more effectively together. I kind of like the, the keys to success ap approach versus like establishing a workflow my only thought behind that, please disagree with me if you guys, if you guys disagree, but my only thought with that is like, depending on the, the stage and the workflow that a community and or a county or stakeholder or whatever is in, um, I, I find a lot of times that like, at least from my perspective with Denver Water, that we feel really far along in the workflow, but then looking back, it's like, oh, but we missed this piece or this thing, and we kind of have to backtrack along the workflow. So I feel like it's not always linear, but I think that's, I think people want, want like an easy workflow to follow when they don't know what to do, and I totally get that. So I, I see the value in like an easy path um, through a workflow, but I just feel like it, it never ends up being that way because of either the desired outcome of the community varies, whether they truly are focused on more forest resiliency or like wildfire, they could have different desired outcomes and there would be different workflows for that. Where I think keys to success is a little bit more 
general, which may be uncomfortable um, for some communities that want a more straightforward process, but I just feel like in my experience, it's it is complex and a and breaking it down into a simple workflow is is not as easy as it should be. Katie, with your experience with some of the collaboratives, what do you think on that topic? Well, I totally agree. I was trying to brainstorm like what format this could take because yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't want to sound repetitive, but it's like the keys to success, I think, makes more sense because there is no linear progression and it's going to vary. Like, that's the first thing everyone will tell you is like, oh, it depends. It depends on what the community wants. It depends on how much collaboration is already happening in the community. It depends on all these different factors. Um, but I also wonder, like, how helpful is it to just put the keys to success and not really like I think having guidance and movement is helpful so I think that's repeating what Christina just said um yeah I'm trying to think of like how how you can show that it is a web and it's all happening at once and it's all happening it'll just depend on the community but also being able to show people like if you're here here's how you get started and not give people that analysis paralysis of just like, I don't even know where to start. Yeah, I, I, I think there's a way that the keys to success are kind of the backbone of the document, but also provides sort of the link to a workflow-like concept that maybe isn't, you know, you have five, six steps to work through, but it's almost, you know, like you said, Katie, sort of sends people in the right direction based on, you know, where they're at or what they need. Um, Aaron, do you have thoughts to, to add? I'll just say that I thought Christina hit it dead on that, that it's not always a linear path. I really like uh, Chaska's uh, stages of readiness. And there could be some things depending on what stage you identified yourself in for step to move forward, to move into some different stages. Uh, and that could be a path that could be outlined maybe a little bit, but every community is different. And, you know, uh, Chafee had a lot of things really going for them. Local champions, they had a lot of work already done on the ground and evaluating private property uh, and landowner engagement had already been at a very high level. Um, so they were at a very high stage of readiness uh, and had a lot of information moving into some of the work that CFRI and Brett did with that community. Not every community is going to be in that same place to be able to take off. So uh, I just like that idea of perhaps thinking about there being different stages and a playbook for you, depending on what stage you're in. Brett, does that make sense? Yeah, I think I think that's where um, we came try to come up with sort of those just keys for success, because some people, like I said, and, and even on this call, um, we've talked about um, Commissioner Cooper and uh, San Miguel County and some things in the Roaring Fork that are going and some areas that are, you know, economically have funds to do this kind of stuff, but are missing some of those collaborative pieces or some technical analysis or some other key success. And there's other places that have, you know, other things or lacking other components. So um, I think that's where, yeah, there's some kind of combination of sort of when it all comes together, you have some mix of these sort of key ingredients, but that all comes together differently for different places. And that's where sort of the combination of when it all comes together, this is what I think as a Forest Health Council, we would hope it looks something, like I said, like what we've done, but also State Forest Service Action Plan and lots of other people have done. I wouldn't want it to be just our model. Um, but then linking it to that stages of readiness is, is more the linear path of how do you get there? How do you assess where you're at on your path to each of these stages? So that, that almost is the linear path is sort of this combination of the two, you know. 
is there sort of a stages of readiness concept that already exists in some form in, in some of these efforts? Um, there's a there's a paper being that Chaska is leading with some other folks being drafted to kind of lay out how it's being used and it's being used right now um, most explicitly with the Northern Colorado Fireshed Collaborative as a means um, to assess how to deliver different kinds of funding to different collaborative partners on the ground um, so that they can build different the capacities they need. Um, so that's where uh, some of this has started, but so there's a draft paper, you know, there's a PowerPoint presentations out there that outline it, but there's not a, it's not a new, it's not a concept that we at CFRI have come up with either. Um, there's people all around the West and, you know, other places that have talked about the same thing. It's just applying it in a specific context. Yeah. No, I'm just thinking ahead of um, kind of transitioning to some good homework assignments to move this forward of, you know, I think some of our homework assignments are, you know, on my end, I'd like to have a pretty clear action item laid out for the committee to consider on May 8th to set us up for the May 11th Forest Health Committee um, meeting with, you know, an identified deliverable of potentially an annotated outline that Courtney, we can work together on just expectations of what is an appropriate deliverable for the Forest Health Council to balance our roles and responsibilities versus what, what would make more sense for an agency. So we could work together on that in the meantime, but trying to get some of the bare bones of what is what does the content and outline look like. And we you know, have this concept of you know, wanting to, to lead with keys of success, keys to success, but blend in the stages of readiness um, concept that maybe isn't a workflow, but really leads, leads people to that our communities to that understanding or have that that um, different type of resource out there. Um, so that's where I'm curious if anyone has thoughts of, you know, do we feel like we could, you know, somebody could take a stab at trying to develop high level outline that blends those two pieces together without reinventing the wheel if some of this, some of these concepts are already out there. I think I'll say I don't I in the next month I don't have capacity I'm the organizing a big workshop the first week in May um and that's taking most all of my capacity along with other things I, I do the earlier conversation that I was kind of listening to though I I wonder where this is going about who's going to do the work of it I, I wonder if just doing an outline is sort of is our final deliverable of a recommendation for the state to then take it and um, use it and develop it further. Um, because I don't know that anyone on the council is going to have capacity to write a big paper or do things like that, um, unless it aligns with some things that Katie and perhaps us are doing or other people um, with these other projects. But I feel like our recommendation should be a rough outline that I could maybe review if other people put it together based on this call, but was I tracking that last conversation of Christina, I think brought up who's going to do the work if we recommend this big book that we're going to write? <laughs> yes, you, yeah, I think, yes, you're tracking. Yeah, um, if, I mean, just to move things forward for that May 8th meeting, uh, like, I don't know, Brett or Chaska, if you guys just want to email the PowerPoint that has the stuff about the readiness. I don't know. Um, but I could I could definitely take a look at the the two pager that had the keys to success and the collaborative readiness stuff. And then see, you know, I could just do like a Word document and combine the things that I think are good in both and how I think they could align. Um, I, I'm I'm happy to do that. I don't I don't think that'd take too much time. 
but I just have to have the the, the right things to reference. That's all. Um, I'm going to put in the chat just because it sounds like there's not like a whole lot, Brett, that is ready to be shared around stages of readiness. Um, but Chaska did a segment mm -hmm. along with others at our annual summit a couple months ago. I don't know if I've already shared this in here, but um, she wrote up a little summary of what we talked about. So it's on like pages eight through 10, I think of this PDF that I'm sending. And it just show the page 10 in particular has a nice little breakdown of the draft kind of stages of readiness. So I think it's at least a good overview um, that might be in line with like a PowerPoint or something. Thanks, Katie. see. Yeah, I'm looking at page 10. Okay. Yeah, there's stages. Okay. So maybe, I don't know, I could take a shot at it. I can look at this table, um, summary of stages of collaborative readiness components and benchmarks, and also look at that two pager that Brett just shared. Is that something that was already emailed? It's, yes, it should be in the emails, and then I linked it to the agenda. So let me know if you can't okay, track cool. it down, Christina. I'll make sure you have it. Um, all right. Well, I'll figure out what that looks like. <laughs> I think that'd be great, Christina, if somebody can just take the lead on kind of melding the two topics. And I think you have a great background to, to try and take a stab at that. And then we can certainly share it sort of one at a time, potentially ahead of the, if there's time ahead of May 11th cool. and then dive into it more fully as a group. Um, so I think just laying out our homework, um, you know, I will make sure we're, we're all very clear on what we would be considering committee action for on May. Um, Courtney, it sounds like in terms of a deliverable where we're leaning towards is, developing an outline with some sort of recommendation and we'd have to figure out the most appropriate agency to take on, you know, fully developing a pre-fire playbook. So getting, you know, just some initial feedback from Tim on, you know, does that seem like an appropriate role for the Forest Health Council and a recommendation in the, the next report? Um, it would be great just so we can articulate that to the full Forest Health Council without getting ahead of ourselves or um, you know, leading us down a path that we should take a take a about face. Yeah, of course. I'll work on that and I will report that out hopefully well before the May 8th meeting so people can kind of be emulating on it. Perfect. And then Christina, you'll take a first stab at sort of melding the two concepts together. And then I think you have good support um, from myself and Christy and Brett to have to provide some feedback ahead of time. So I really appreciate you taking that on. And I think that will help us um, move some of this forward. Awesome. Yeah. And I see Katie over too. So um, yeah, so I'll drop something and send it around to, uh, to Christy, Katie, uh, Brett and Amy. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Great. Um, and just so we don't lose sight, since we're nearing the end, um, Brett and Aaron, I'd love if you have any update on the Colorado All Lands Forest Activity Database and some of those high-level conversations of, you know, what might be a good starting point for Colorado, looking at some of the models from Utah, or we've talked about the New Mexico Vegetation Database. So this is very much, I think, a topic on our radar as a, as a committee to, to think through if there's a good recommendation there as well. I'll jump in a little bit. Uh, CFRI and uh, CSFS has ha have had some meetings to determine kind of what we need to move forward. Uh, I think the plan is for uh, us to work together uh, in this year, try to pull together as much of that information as possible for it to be permanently housed with CSFF on the Forest Atlas. I think we've agreed to go ahead and manage that all lands treatment database across the entire state. Uh, we do recognize that this will take about a half of an FTE uh, to fully manage this long term. And we are still looking for 
what is going to need to be about fifty thousand dollars a year to be able to make that happen uh but we're committed to doing that uh we think we can find some partners and some opportunities to make that work uh and to be clear i'm not asking for the forest health council to to bring that forward um but we will be looking for opportunities to find that funding long term so that it can uh, rest in the same place as a lot of our other data uh, in that forest atlas, uh, along with our soon to be released uh, Colorado wildfire hazard assessment data. Thanks, Aaron. And, and um, I have one thought, but Brett, did you have pieces to add? I, I think just the there's a lot of work to like Aaron said, make it happen. And we just have meetings are continuing and discussions are continuing. I think it, I would really look for advice from the Forest Health Council of sort of the utility of it. And there's limits on, you know, there's what's in the data is what's in the data and we can't make stuff up. That's not there. We could, but I'm not going to. Um, <laughs> so I think just looking for advice from the Forest Health Council moving forward on how to develop this and its use and that kind of stuff um, it is important. Yeah, thanks, Brett. It, it will be nice to turn our attention a little bit more to this topic and similarly thinking about the alignment with the next recommendation report of this council. I think certainly I'm hopeful that it would carry some good uh, weight to, to lend some support to this, um, this effort and the financial needs. Um, so this is something that, you know, maybe we can continue to just tack on a bit at our next meeting and fully make sure we leave space for the Forest Health Council to consider weighing in on this topic in a recommendations or the next set of recommendations to the governor. Um, so we'll, you know, sounds like at our May 11th meeting, we'll have a, a greater discussion of timelines and needs to develop that report, but um, I just don't want to lose sight of, of this topic too with this committee. Anything else? Any final thoughts, questions? Um, our next meeting is May 8th, like we've talked about, so we'll leave good space to really fine tune our recommendation to the full Forest Health Council. Um, and then depending on how far we get, we can um, touch base too on this Colorado All Lands Forest Activity Database. So we can maintain that on our radar as well. All right, well, thanks everyone. It's great to see you. Months go by fast, um, so I appreciate everyone's support of the work here, and um, I will see you all on, on May 8th. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, Amy. All right, bye, everyone.